Once a month, I sit down and I do what's called the profit first exercise. And basically, I look at these benchmarks and immediately start redistributing the money based on a percentage. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome to the program, everybody. Uh, I want to share with you some information today that I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this may, may be the most important episode that I have ever put out after five years of doing the Appraiser Coach Podcast. But I tell you, folks, this is absolutely the core, the heart of what I do as the appraiser coach. And I hope that you will take notes today. I hope that uh, that we can have a fun journey here today together. And I hope that you will, more than anything, recognize the importance of the information that I'm going to share uh, with you today. I want to pause here and remind you that we are sponsored by three important and great companies, one of them being Alamode Software. Alamode, of course, is the software that I use and have been for over 20 years to do my appraisal work. They have what I need. And they have what you need as well. Check them out. Go to alamode.com or 800 alamode. Data Master. Data Master, of course, is the way that I, well, I, I save time. Like 45 minutes per report, folks. It's huge. Huge, huge, huge. It will be as, as well for you. Data Master USA is where you go. Datamasterusa.com. Finally, we're sponsored by OREP Insurance. OREP is my e and insurance. And the reason it's my e insurance, well, because they're the best, right? The benefits that you receive through e will surpass anything that you are with. And I think they're going to save you money. They have me several years in a row. OREP.org is where you find them. O-R-E-P.org. All right, folks, I want to share with you what I call financial benchmarks, okay? And honestly, this is one of the, the lessons that you would likely go through if you were doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Definitely, if you were a member of my mastermind group, we have talked about this constantly because this is really where it matters, okay? Now, let me just set the stage here by saying, and I'm just gonna be blunt here, right? There is not a soul out there, I don't think, and I could be wrong, and if you're out there, please comment, please reach out to me, I would love to meet you. And I mean that sincerely, that's not a sarcastic thing. If you are out there, and there may be, I really don't know, but if you, if there are appraisers out there who are simply doing this pro bono and they just love the appraisal business so much and then they're financially secure, you know, they could, they could live on an island if they wish, but they decide to do appraisal work other than because of the pay. Okay. I would love to meet you. And, and the reason I set it up that way is to help us to just be grounded for a second and help us to understand that if tomorrow it was illegal to charge for appraisal work, I think that 99.999% of us are going to be out of business the next day right? I love appraisal. You know that. It's something I've done forever. I find myself pinching myself constantly thinking, this is the coolest job ever. It really is. I love to go in people's homes. I love to meet them. I love to, you know, the detective work of figuring out what, what a home is worth, where the value is and how to support that and how to produce a credible report. I enjoy all of that. I really do. I mostly enjoy what I do here as far as teaching appraisers, but I just love being, being an appraiser. I think it's an awesome, awesome job, but, and there's a big but, if I don't make money at it, I'm not doing it anymore. That's the honest truth. I don't love it so much that I would do it even if I didn't make any money. And I think most of you, if you were honest, would probably say the same thing, okay? So that being said, we now have established that most of us are in this business for the money, okay? I hate to state it that way, but come on. And I know some of you are gonna say, well, Dustin, that's not the only reason. I get it. No, I, same with me. I just shared with you several things that I really love about this work. It's not just the money. If it was just the money, I could do almost anything out there. There's a lot of things that pay a lot more than appraisal right? And there's things I can do, but I do love the work and I do love the money. Okay. That's my favorite part is getting the check. Uh, you can, you can take the whole assembly line from start to finish. And there's not a thing I enjoy about the appraisal work more than getting the check at the end of the day. Now, that being said, I, on a regular basis as the appraiser coach have opportunities to get very, let's use the word intimate with appraiser, other appraiser financial statements. Okay. Balance sheets, profit loss statements, just questions, just talking to them about their finances. If you come to me and you pay money and spend time personally being coached by the appraiser coach, you can bet that I'm not just going to tell you what you want to hear. You can bet that I'm going to be very 
circumspect, and I'm going to be very bold. I'm going to be very honest with you. In fact, I often find myself saying, okay, Jane, you didn't pay me to be nice. You didn't pay me to pat you on the head. Okay, I'm going to be very forthright with you. I'm going to be very bold with you. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I paid you. Okay, here we go. This is what I see. And we get into some very, well, challenging situations is, is one way to put it. But situations that really cause appraisers to step back and say, holy cow, I, I can't believe Dustin was so forthright with me. And it can hurt feelings if you don't have some tough skin. So I'll just be honest. I'm going to say it in a nice and professional manner, right? But I'm going to say it. You didn't come to me to be coddled. You didn't come to me to say, boy, what a good little girl you're being. What a great business you're running. You came to me to find the problems and help you fix them. And part of that process is looking at your financials. And this is what I find. And there's nothing wrong with this. Please understand. This is normal. In fact, I wouldn't expect anything else. If you're coming to me with questions about how to govern your life with regard to your business, we're going to find problems. Folks, I have problems and I have a mentor who constantly points them out as well. And we get into my financials as well. And he's very bold with me which I appreciate. That's one of the reasons he's still my mentor. If he simply patted me on the head and said, Dustin, you're doing such a great job. Way to go, slugger. Do you think I'm going to keep going to him? No, I need to be improved. I need to be kicked in the butt and I need to have somebody pushing me to become better. And that's what a good coach and a good mentor will do. But one of the things that I find quite often, I would say more often than not. In fact, I don't remember the last time I didn't find this, right? Where we get into the financials, we find that things are a little bit skewampus. Okay. And maybe it's working, to a level, but there's a reason that people hire the appraiser coach. It's not working as well as they would like it to be. Many, many appraisers come to me and they say, Dustin, at least some form of this, right? This isn't a direct quote, but, but some form of Dustin, I'm working my butt off and I'm successful on paper, right? I'm, I'm having a lot of numbers. I'm doing a lot of work, but I don't feel like I'm taking much home. I feel like I'm working paycheck to paycheck. I feel like I'm working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. I don't see my significant other. I don't see my kids as often as I'd like to. I work weekends. I even work Sundays. And yet I'm still just kind of barely paying the bills. What in the heck is going on? And folks, I can tell you that time after time after time, what it comes down to is your financials. There is a commercial out there, and I hear it quite often because I'm on Sirius XM radio and, it, and it's constantly being played. And I remember the company, it doesn't even matter. But the tagline is, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. Okay, you, you've probably heard the commercial. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. Now, my question my good friends, do you know your business? And you cannot know your business if you don't know your numbers. It is so vitally important. And it's not fun. Let's just be honest. I don't look forward to this. I do it monthly, but I don't look forward to it. Okay. Now, when I say I do it monthly, I sit down and do what's called the profit first system every month, which gives me an opportunity to look at what, what gross is coming in and how to distribute it. Now, every quarter, I go through a bigger process where I'm doing my financials, meaning my profit loss statement, my, my uh, balance sheet, and so on and so forth. Okay, That's a much more involved process. It takes uh, roughly an hour per business, Okay, so maybe a couple hours on a Saturday or a Monday morning. But on a regular basis, every month I distribute to my different categories. And that's what I want to share with you today. Not necessarily the specific categories, but I want to share with you some appraisal business financial benchmarks. Okay. These are benchmarks that will allow you to find success in your appraisal world. And in order to hit these benchmarks, you have to be, and I'm going to use the word religious about the way you distribute your gross earnings. Okay, let's just get very, very basic for a second. Okay, I know all of you know this, but this is just going to lay a foundation. I'm not talking down to you. I'm just building a foundation from the bottom up. And that is, there is a difference as a business owner between gross and net. And, and, and it's this opportunity to take the gross income. So if you got paid $1,000 on an appraisal, how do you distribute that money so that at the end of the day, you've made money, you've paid your employees, you've taken care of your overhead, Okay, you even put a little bit into savings. How is it that you do that time after time after time so that you find that you're being successful as a business owner? That's what I want to share with you today. And I promise you, this is going to be one of the most important episodes that the appraiser coach will ever put out here, because this is the secret to success. These are the benchmarks that if you are looking at and making sure that you're following regularly or religiously, Okay, that you're simply dogmatic about it, that you make sure that these numbers match each and every month. I promise you, I don't care what your level is. I don't care what your volume is. If you can pay attention to the benchmarks that I'm about to give to you for free, okay, please write them down. I promise you, you will find success as an appraiser. I promise you that you can use these with pretty much any service oriented business. 
Okay, these are service-oriented benchmarks. I've, I've been asked, where did you get these, Dustin? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is, I don't really know. It's one of those things that I've kind of just learned over time. Uh, certainly, I've read books, and, and I wish I could point to something and say, you know what, that's where I got that from and give credit where credit is due. But it's one of those things that I kind of just pieced together by myself over the years. And furthermore, and here, this should add some credibility. I have used this for over 12 years now, and it works I'm telling you, if you will follow these numbers, it works. And I can't give you a better reference than that other than for myself and for those that I've coached. If they will follow these benchmarks, and we're talking percentages here in just a few minutes, of where to distribute the gross earnings, I promise you, you will find success. Speaking of success, I want to share with you a couple of companies that have helped me to become more successful, one of them being Alamode Software. Folks, I can't point to any software, maybe other than A now, that I use as often, right? All mode allows me to be able to be successful as an appraiser because I'm using technology and marrying it with efficiencies. It's allowing me to be more effective at what I do. It will allow you to do the same thing. Check them out by going to allamode.com or pick up the phone. I really encourage people to call all mode because what you can do is call them and say, hey, talk to me, right? What is it that I'm missing not being a customer of all mode? And they can answer that. That's what they're paid to do. Check it out by calling them at 800 all mode we are sponsored by Datamaster. Datamaster saving appraisers about 40 to 45 minutes every single report that they do. Folks, count that up. I don't know how many reports you're doing in a month, but let's say you're doing 40 appraisals in a month, okay? And let's just use a conservative number, all right? Let's just say it saved you 30 minutes per report. You're saving 1,200 minutes for every single month that you're using Datamaster. That's 20 hours. What could you do with 20 more hours per month? Think about that. That's half a week. Half a week you're saving using, what are you waiting for? Datamasterusa.com. It's datamasterusa.com. Finally, we are sponsored by OREP Insurance. OREP is awesome. I just renewed with OREP and it was so simple. Within four business days, I was up and going again. And I actually thought they'd made a mistake. I emailed them back and I said, Julie, look at that rate again. Is that accurate? And she goes, yeah, we saved you money again this year. <laughs> Love it. OREP.org. O-R-E-P.org. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back to the program. Again, this may be the most important episode of the history. I don't think I'm exaggerating the history of the Appraiser Coach podcast. At least it will be the most important episode of the year. Okay, Now, maybe there's some episodes out there that have changed your life, but I promise you, folks, if you will follow the benchmarks that I'm about to give you for free, okay, people pay big money to come to the Appraiser Coach and have them pick apart, have him rather pick apart their financials. That's weird talking about yourself in third party. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I can tell you this, though. The benchmarks that I give you, if you can do it on your own, will make you successful. And I don't care what level. I don't care if you're doing 20 appraisals a month or 200 appraisals a month, literally, because we're talking percentages here and we're talking about success. And we're talking about the ability to be able to be successful, right? It all comes down to money. It all comes down to success, right? And I'm not equating money with success. Okay. In fact, that's why I said it twice and it comes down to money and it comes down to success, but it comes down ultimately to be able to pay your bills and be able to take home a little bit at the end of the day. That's really what it comes down to. Okay. So I want to share with you what I call the appraisal business financial benchmarks. Okay. The appraisal business financial benchmarks. These are percentages that if you will follow, okay. And the way that I do it, but let me, let me finish that sentence and then I'll back up. If you will follow, you will find success because they are percentages. You'll always come out ahead. Now, this is the way that I do it. I have one central account that everything is deposited into. It doesn't matter if I get a physical check where I have to take it down to the bank or if I you know, scan it into my app and deposit it that way, or if I have an ACH payment that goes directly or direct deposit right into the bank account. There is one account that I call appraisal deposits, and that's it. That's all I do with that appraisal deposit account. Every penny that I make gross goes into that account. Once a month, I sit down and I do what's called the profit first exercise. And basically, I, I look at these benchmarks and immediately start redistributing the money based on a percentage. So let's say I sit down and there's $10,000 in that account. Okay, this is just going to make the numbers easy. Okay, let's say that I made $10,000 in a month and it's sitting there in that account. By the time I get done, now I always keep $1,000 in there just as a buffer, right? So let's say there's $11,000. I'm going to ignore 1,000 of that and I'm just going to deal with the 10,000. Okay, that 1,000 is going to roll over every single month just as a, as a little bit of a cushion. Okay, but let's say there's $10,000 in there that I made during that month that I need to distribute. How do I do that? Well, I follow the benchmarks that I'm about to give you and I literally, okay, I use that word intentionally, I literally move that money to different accounts so that the end of, of this period, it takes me about 20 minutes, 
at the end of this period, I have $1,000 left in that account, which means if I have $10,986.12, it's all but $1,000 going to be redistributed, okay? And they basically just go into other accounts that I can start to utilize the money in, okay? And that way I keep things separate. Now, one of the reasons the book is called Profit First, and by the way, I do not follow the Profit First book to the letter. You should know that, okay? I like the book. I think it goes too far in some instances, and but the concept is something that I've used even before Profit First was written, okay? It's this idea that you pay yourself first, by the way, I learned that concept years ago in a little book called The Richest Man in Babylon. If you've not read that book, folks, you need to pick up the book. I read it over and over and over again. About every three years, I read it again. Just a great, great book. And one of the things that he teaches in there is that you pay yourself first, profit first. Okay, You pay your business first, profit first. Okay, And that for me is 10%. Okay, So that's the first benchmark. 10%, the very first thing. So if I've got $10,000, $1,000 goes into my profit account. Now I'm down to $9,000, okay? And then I start to distribute from there, all right? The next thing you're going to distribute is your owner's distributions, okay? This is what you get paid for being the owner of the company, period, end of story, okay? This is what you get paid for being a tier five individual. That's ownership, all right? It may even be what you get paid for being a tier six individual, which is, which is an appraiser in retirement or somebody who's sold the business, okay? Depending on how you structure that. Okay, so 10% off the top goes to profit or savings. Some people even call it a slush fund. I like to call it a profit fund because this is, the, well, this is what makes the business profitable. Now, that money sits there and isn't used unless I need it. So that $1,000 of the $10,000 goes into an account that I don't really touch. It just sits there as profit for the company. Okay, now I now currently have enough money in that profit fund that if I did not make a penny for the next three months, I could still pay the salaries of my employees. Now, not the contractors that are on commission, that's different, but the salaries of the individuals that, that work for me, uh, those that are on salary, those that are working hourly, I could have them work full time, not cut their hours at all. And for three months, I could still pay their salaries. Now, I would have a problem <laughs> at that point, but hopefully three months, 90 days is enough for me to make some decisions, maybe some major decisions that are going to help me to move forward and be better, you know, uh, and, and more successful down the road. But I love being able to sleep better at night knowing that that profit is in there. So 10%, every paycheck goes into an account and 10% once a month gets immediately redistributed to the profit side of things. So that's your first benchmark. Profit equals 10%, okay? Number two, owner distributions. This is simply what you get paid for being an owner. Please recognize this is not what you get paid for being an appraiser, okay? That's tier three. We're not talking tier three here. Okay? Think of it this way. You often hear me use the doctor's office analogy. Okay? If you are being the doctor, you're being a technician, and you should get paid to be a technician. right? But if you are the owner of that doctor's office, and they may be the same person, okay? let's say the doctor does own the doctor's office, you're going to get a payment for being a doctor, for seeing patients, and you're going to get a payment for owning the doctor's office. right? And that doesn't have to be the doctor, but the owner gets paid. The owner is the one taking the risk. The owner is the one that has the liability. Okay, of the business. And therefore, I think that they deserve about 20%. Okay, so that's your next benchmark, owner distribution, 20%. So if I've got $10,000 in that account, $2,000 gets transferred immediately to my owner distribution account, which basically says, hey, Dustin, here's what you get for being, being cool. Okay, that's what you get for being you. All right, operating expenses. Operating expenses should not include your payroll. Okay, we're going to separate that out in just a second. Operating expenses is simply your overhead. Okay, what, what are you paying for your, your appraisal software, your MLS fees, your uh, National Association of, of Realtors fees, your lockbox fees, your, your E&O insurance, your you know, fill in the blank. All of the stuff that you need to run a successful business should not include, and here's your next number, operating expenses equal 20%. Okay? Now, if you're doing the math, we're now up to 50%. There's profit, 10%, owner distribution, 20%. Operating expenses should not exceed 20%. By the way, mine is closer to, to 12% right now. Okay, Over the last year, I've averaged about 12% on the operating expenses. It will probably be more for you because I have a pretty big operation. And just economy of scale, the bigger the operation, usually the less you're paying per unit for the the operating expenses, right? In other words, just because I do, you know, if I do 100 appraisals a month versus 10 appraisals a month, I'm still paying the same amount for total software, for example. Okay, that, that would just give you an example. So the more, the bigger you get, usually the smaller your operating expenses are going to be. Now, the bigger you get, usually the more your salaries and contractor pay is going to be, okay? So for this next benchmark, just know that operating expenses and salaries and contractor pay, okay, should not exceed over 70% total. 
Okay, so if you're if you're doing the math, the next number is salaries and contractor pay should not exceed fifty percent. Okay, so that's your next benchmark. So you've got profit ten percent, owner distribution twenty percent, uh, operating expenses twenty percent, and then the remaining fifty percent should be salaries and or contractor pays. Now, how does that break down? Well, we could be here all day, but I will tell you this: my tier three contractors make a bulk of that, right? And and very little goes to my tier one, tier two, because I'm paying them, you know, what ten, twelve, fifteen, maybe you know, maybe a little bit more per hour, right? But my but my uh, technicians, the ones taking liability, the tier three, those trained in appraiser in appraisal rather, should be making the bulk of that. Okay, there's a lot that goes into that experience and education and liability and you know availability and frankly the amount of sacrifice that they put in. Right, is bigger than someone who might be in the office doing data entry or answering phones, for example. Okay, okay. Those are the benchmarks. Now ask yourself where you are. I'm just going to repeat them really quickly. Okay, profit 10%. Now, by the way, let me before I before, you know let me let me finish that vein and then I'll then I'll back up. Profit 10%, owner distribution 20%, operating expenses 20%, salary slash contractor pay 50%. Now I want to make it very clear that I don't follow these things exactly. Right at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter even when I look at my profit loss statement, I I often will go through and, and a lot of people ask me what do you do with a profit loss statement? Well, you're looking at it. I have these benchmarks and I have categories. For example, total software will go into operating expenses. Now I only pay for total once a year. Okay, that's how I I choose to do it annually, but it still has to be distributed as if I'm paying it every month. Okay, so when I sit down to do my quarterly uh, financials and I look at my operating expenses, I'm going to take whatever it is I'm paying for total software and I'm going to, let's say it's $1,200 a year, I'm going to split that into $100 per month. Okay, and because of that distribution, I can now look and say, okay, is $100 per month for my software fit within the 20% of operating expenses? And if it doesn't, then I need to find ways to cut. If it doesn't, then I need to find ways to be more efficient and more effective at running my appraisal business. Okay? And that really is true with all of these things. So when I sit down to do coaching with you and we look at your salaries, if your salaries are over 70%, I'm going to ask you, okay, fine, let's talk about some of these other things. Where are your operating expenses? Where is your, your, your profit? And I can tell you where 99% of the people fall short. They don't have a profit line and they don't have owner distributions line. So 30% is not being collected. And consequently, I ask them, well, hold on a second. What, what do you get paid for being a business owner? Well, you know, I get paid because I'm, I'm an appraiser. Well, yeah, that's great. That's, that should be part of your salaries and contractor pay. Now, let me make it very clear. Owners of companies who do appraisal business or who do appraisal work, inspections, choosing comps, making adjustments, blah, 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 should be paid as part of the salary inside the salaries and contractor pay of 50%. The owner distribution should be outside that realm. So if you are an appraiser and you work on an appraisal, you should get 20% as the owner and another, what, 30%, 40%, whatever it is in your business for being a technician as well. That will allow you to be able to replace yourself down the road if you feel like that's what you need to do. Bring another appraiser in. You want to pay that appraiser well for what that appraiser is doing. But you, as the business owner, should still make a profit. Now, in conclusion, I want to share with you that this is not always going to fit perfectly. I gave you the example earlier. I'm just going to repeat it quickly. My salaries and contractor pay currently are a little over 50%. I think it comes out to about 56, 57% right now, last time I checked. Okay. But my operating expenses are down to 12%. Okay. And there is this balance that takes place between operating expenses and salaries and contractor pay. Again, I'm going to repeat the bigger you get, Typically, the less percentage-wise, okay, not total-wise, not, not dollars, okay, the, the dollars are going to rise the, the bigger you get, right? But the percentage that it takes in your overall gross is going to be reduced because of economy of scale. So the bigger you get, the smaller your operating expenses or your overhead is going to be. But typically, that's going to be balanced out by your salaries and contractor pays, which is going to increase. So in this case, let's just use round numbers. You might have a situation where your operating expenses are 15%. Okay, instead of 20%, but your salaries and contractor pays are 55%. Okay? The key here is that operating expenses and salaries and contractor pay should not exceed 70%. Otherwise, you're not going to have that additional 20 and 10%. 10% for profit, 20% for owner distribution. And that is key to running a successful business. If you're not taking home money at the end of the day for being an owner, then you're not doing it right. You're not really being an owner. You're just owning a job. And number two, if your business is not making a profit in so much that you're not spending every dollar that comes in, Okay. You also can have, uh, there's some improvement to be made there as well. Okay. Whew. 
<laughs> How's that? Why did I share that with you? I shared that with you folks because I want more than anything for you to be successful. And if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. Well, now you know your business. By the way, folks, I've talked a lot about uh, personal coaching here, and I love doing that. If you feel a need to have me get in and help you to be more successful as a business owner, it would be my pleasure. Did you know that every service that I provide as the appraiser coach is 100% backed with a money back guarantee? Meaning, if you pay to meet with me and you are not completely satisfied that I will give you enough good information that you can make that money back and then some, and I'm talking multiples of then some, no questions asked, I'll give you your money back. I kid you not. If you want to be successful as a business owner, I promise you I can help you to do that. And I back it with a 100% money back guarantee. Just go to theappraisercoach.com and click on coaching and it would be my pleasure to help you. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. We're talking about the ability, the, the ability, we're talking about the ability 